please tell us your name, um, the business you work for, and a bit about your role, please. So my name is, is Dan Brown. I work for Brockton Everlast, which is a, a property investment company. And the, my title is uh, I'm a managing director and head of portfolio. So what does Brockton do? So Brockton is a property investment company. In simple terms, we invest in, in properties, um, mostly in, in London and in cities close to London. Uh, and we either invest in uh, properties which have existing occupiers generating rent that gives us the company an income or in some cases we redevelop or develop new properties uh, to put tenants into but the idea of the business is ultimately to create uh, income from occupiers to give our investors a return so we have a portfolio of, of properties um, and my job is essentially overseeing all of that portfolio um, through every stage of its of its life cycle. What attracted you to this part of the industry? So uh, I have a slightly unusual um, career path in that I started my career as a lawyer uh, and after doing the compulsory training at the start of my career, you have to decide which sector you want to specialise in as a lawyer. And through my training, the area that I enjoyed the most was with real estate property. I found it really interesting. I liked the fact that it was something tangible. You could actually see the things that you were working on. You know, I used to work on, on big deals where people were buying properties or selling properties or developing properties. And I liked the fact that you could actually see what you were dealing with, as opposed to other areas of law where you were dealing with big financial transactions and there was nothing to actually see and touch. So I've always enjoyed um, the idea of real estate when I was young. Um, and whilst I enjoyed being a real estate lawyer, um, I decided very early on in my career that actually what I would love to be doing is actually working on the other side of, of property. And instead of being a lawyer acting for clients, I wanted to effectively be the client. So that was what really attracted me to, to property in the first place, in, in, in the first instance. So how did you manage to move from being a lawyer um, into property? So it's not an easy path. So that's the first thing I, I would say. So um, it certainly can be challenging. Um, but effectively, I met uh, a developer who was working with one of my clients. Um, we did a deal together, a transaction together. We got on really well. And I took the opportunity to effectively ask him if he would ever consider employing somebody like me. Um, uh, and he did. He saw that I had a skill set that he felt was transferable from from law into into property development. Um, and so I moved on to you know working with, with a developer in a development company. And then ultimately our business uh, merged into Brockton, which is the firm on our work at. And then over the years since we merged, whilst at the beginning I was very much involved in all of the developments that that Brockton did. Um, and actually, I was sort of overseeing all the developments with a, a, a team of development managers underneath me. Um, my role has has evolved over the years I've been here. Um, so I now have a much more general role, not just looking at development, but actually looking after all of the assets we own in our portfolio and making sure that uh, the various team members who have different jobs, whether that's looking at new things to buy, um, and doing all of the due diligence required to see if that's something we'd like to pursue. Um, or once we've decided we do want to buy something, um, the legal transaction uh, involved in, in, in buying. Um, once we own something, that asset, we're going to have a business plan. So that might be a development, it might be leasing, it might be refurbishment. Um, and my job is to make sure that all of those actions that we decided when we bought something need to be done in order to create value are being done. So I'm involved in, in lots of different things uh, across the business, um, uh, which is which is really great. I enjoy the, the flexibility. Um, I enjoy the, the fact that I'm involved in lots of different things. And every every day I'm doing something different. In fact, within the, every hour of my day, um, I'm jumping from you know one thing to another um, and the two could have nothing to do with each other. So it's really interesting. Um, and my day becomes very varied as a result. What what skills have you brought from your legal training? What what do, what have you found to be most useful um, in what you do at the moment? 
So I think as a lawyer, what you learn, um, what you learn most is a, a disciplined, structured way of approaching things. Um, so there's a big difference between sitting and reviewing a legal document and making comments on it um, and then, you know, developing a building or, or, or running an investment portfolio within property. But what law taught me was a, a structured approach to doing things and then thinking about things analytically. Um, you know, law, particularly transactional law, is a very analytical thing. You know, you're constantly trying to solve puzzles for your clients. When you're negotiating something on behalf of a client, you're trying to problem solve. You're trying to, to find ways of resolving matters of dispute between people and trying to find something that's going to work in your client's favour, but the other person will agree. So you need to think laterally, you need to think analytically. And that's something that in my day job now, I'm constantly having to do. I'm constantly being asked, you know, by our team and by our lawyers, um, you know, what's my view as to how we might resolve a problem? And, and a big part of my job is is providing that advice and trying to help people solve problems, you know, plug holes, fight fires. Um, so I think the, that's the key thing that I brought across from from being a lawyer to, to, to the job I do now. It's the, the kind of analytical, thoughtful approach to problem solving. Uh, and what other skills have you had to add over time? So when I started in, de in development, having been a lawyer, there was a huge amount I didn't know. Um, you know, I'd never I'd never worked on in a development you know, project other than on the outside, you know, on the legal side. So I had to learn to understand design processes, a planning process, how you procure construction, how you buy a construction contract and, and the process of, of something actually then getting built. I had to learn the commercial side of negotiating, you know, leasing and sales and purchases. You know, obviously I knew the legal bit, but I wasn't the person who was ultimately agreeing the deal in the first place. So it's a huge journey that I've been on in the 15 years or so since I transitioned from being a lawyer into being a, a developer and investor. Um, and those are skills that I've learned along the way. I think that what's difficult about wanting to work in, in the property industry certainly from an investment perspective or a development perspective, is there aren't necessarily, um, there's no way you can go to necessarily learn all the skills that you will need to become a property investor or developer. But there are a multitude of career paths that you can pursue, which can ultimately lead you into the property industry. And I think that's what's exciting about the property industry. So uh, as, um, as an employer in the property industry, what sort of qualities uh, and what sort of qualifications are you looking for um, when you meet people at, at, at all levels um, to come and work at Brockton? So I think the, the, the most important thing that we're, that we're looking for in people is a thirst to learn and to be inquisitive. Um, I think it's really important in, in any industry, but particularly in ours, that you are not nervous of you know, offering a view, asking a question, um, but more importantly, that you are willing to, to 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 read, to be inquisitive, to learn about the broad breadth of things that are going to ultimately influence our industry. So I think we're really always looking for people that have a, a genuine interest in, in property and real estate and that they don't have to know everything, but they have to show that they want to learn and that they have an interest. So outside of whatever they're studying, um, that they happen to read, you know, the Financial Times or they read the Independent or another newspaper or they read a particular magazine, whether it's The Economist or, you know, a property magazine, you know, which would be unusual for a, for a student. But, you know, they're, they're not difficult things to read, um, certainly once you, you know, break the barrier of, you know, opening the first few pages. And I think that's something that, you know, we really look for in people. You know, we want to see that they're not just saying that they want to work in the property industry because they think they, they like the sound of it, but they've got a genuine interest in it and that they are inquisitive and want to ask questions and want, and want to learn. So I think that that's that's the first thing. Um, of course, you know, we want people that are team players. You know, property is a, is a team game. Um, it, it's not something that any one individual can do on their own. Um, you know, buying a property... Uh, uh, improving it to create better value and then potentially ultimately selling it 
it involves a multitude of people, not just within our firm, but outside of our firm as well. And you've got to be a team player. You've got to be a people person. Um, you've got to be able to work with other people um, and to be adaptable because, you know, when you work with other people, you know, not everyone's the same. Everyone has different personalities. You know, you like to wear a, a suit and a tie. I like to wear a relaxed polo shirt. But we work brilliantly together, even though we look different. Um, and that, I think, is a, it's, I think that's key for any industry that, that anyone goes into. But I think particularly in property, it really is a, a team game. So property is a very varied industry, as we've discussed. But if you were to try and pick one or maybe even two things that you like the most, what, what would you say it is that, that um, if you were selling a career in property to someone, what would you say this is what you all, this is what I love the most about it? So the first thing is something I sort of touched on at the beginning when I was describing why I had no interest in the first place, which is that real estate is a tangible industry, as in you can see the stuff that you're working on. You can walk down the street and you can look at the buildings. You can go around the buildings. You can touch and feel them. And there's something really special about being involved in a project, particularly, say, a development project, which you can work on for five, six years and taking it from one thing all the way through a journey and becoming another thing. And I love I love that feeling. I take real pride in the fact that, you know, as I said, I can walk down the street and I can point to a building and say, you know, I worked on that um, and it was a successful project. And, and that's something that, you know, makes me really proud. And I think that that doesn't that's not something that comes in every industry. You know, there aren't not in not in every industry. Can can you create something that you can then, you know, touch and feel and say that you feel like you're part of. So I think that's the first thing. The second thing is is the variety. You know, within our business, we have got people from all different walks of life. Uh, you know, I came from a legal career. You came from a quantity surveying career, which is construction cost consultancy. We have people who come from a financial career. We have people come from a, a surveying career, people with a planning consultancy background, uh, marketing. Um, and there's real variation within a property firm because of the different life cycle of, a, of an asset and you know what you need to achieve through that life cycle so there's huge variety and with that brings a variety of people and you know again within our firm we have all different sorts of people um and that makes it a really interesting world to to work in so so variety seems to be a key uh, a very big theme um and it was for both of us actually um would, would you mind describing a typical day to give us a feel for what um, the, the kind of things that you would do um, on any given working day yeah, I can try. Um, but as I said at the beginning, I mean, literally hour to hour, I'm doing all sorts of different things. But, you know, look, to, to give you an example, I might start my day, you know, um, with a, an hour, hour and a half session sitting in, in a meeting or a workshop with a creative marketing agency who we've employed to create the branding for one of our new buildings um, with some of my colleagues and, and having a really fun, creative debate about, you know, what are the things that we want to try and convey in terms of selling the building, leasing the building, you know, what might we brand it, what might its name be. Um, so that could be you know, the start of my day. I might then join a, a call with our lawyers who are doing a new transaction with us where we are, say, buying a new asset and we spend an hour discussing issues on the contract for the acquisition of that property and also the issues around the due diligence. So what we've found in terms of um, uh, you know, the, the historic uh, ownership of the asset, things that might impact the asset in terms of rights and uh, that other people have over it. Um, I might then move into a technical design meeting so I could sit in a meeting with, you know, architects and engineers who are looking at one of our new schemes, designing one of our new schemes. Um, that could be an hour and a half, two hour session looking at looking at designs and plans and debating you know, what's good, what's bad, how we want things to, to, to change. Um, and then I might, you know, move and end my day um, meeting, you know, uh, uh, a local um, industry representative group in one of the areas that we own an asset, whether it be the West End or the city or, or, or somewhere else, you know, talking about the, the wider environmental issues around assets that we own, um, uh, talking about the things that are important to other owners, how we can improve things for everybody, um, improving things for the, the public environment, but also the private environment for the occupiers of our buildings. Uh, and then in the evening, I might join a, uh, a webinar about 
any you know any myriad of topics whether it could it could be financing it could be a legal topic it could be sustainability which is a, a huge um a huge uh, subject now in, in our industry so i hope that gives you a flavor that you know throughout my day i could be doing a variety of different things which in, which involve a variety of different skill sets different people different topics yeah thank you um if you were to encounter yourself at the age of 16 or 17 with the knowledge that you now have and the professional experience that you now have, what two or three key pieces of advice would you give yourself um, uh, with regard to career path? So when I was 16 or 17, um, I could see, you know, lots of people around me of a similar age that seemed to have a absolute certain um, knowledge of what they wanted to be and what they wanted to do and th and that wasn't me um and at the time um if i think back I, I probably found that quite overwhelming and to an extent i kind of went down the legal route because um i felt like it was a good profession um uh and therefore you know it was it was as good a choice as any but there was no you know real decision making but having said that i think if i was looking back talking to myself i'd be saying you know don't worry don't panic your career is a long one and the first job you go into doesn't necessarily define where you're ultimately going to land. Um, and I think what's important is to take your time and to really consider as many options as you can, find out about as many industries as you can. If you have a, a feeling about something you think you might enjoy, that's great. Pursue that, find out as much information as you can, read up about it, try and make connections through things like Access Aspiration, in terms of trying to get experience you can in, into certain firms in that industry. Um, but don't panic, you know, and, and don't feel like at 16, 17, you should have a definitive view about exactly what you want to do. The other bit of advice I would give myself um, if I was looking back is similar, you know, on a similar note to, to what I've just said, is think about your career as, as, as stepping stones. Think about, you know, you're at the start of your career standing on one side of a river, on one riverbank, and you know, in 20 or 30 years time, you're gonna be on the other side of the riverbank. But to get to the other side, you know, there's six or seven lily pads, you know, to, to get over there. You won't get to the third or fourth or fifth lily pad until you step on the first one. Um, don't be afraid to take that first step because that first step isn't the last step. You know, you, you've got to take the first step to get to the second one, the second one to get to the third one. But it can be a, a slow, considered journey. Um, and I think, you know, it's important to, to take your time and to take opportunities when they come, but not feel that that has to be, you know, the last opportunity. See each opportunity as a, as a step, you know, or a stage in, 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 in your process of progressing a career, whatever that might end up being. Fantastic. That's been uh, very interesting. Thank you very much, Dan. Thanks, Richard.